Good evening and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jasmine Allen and I'm the director and curator of the Staines Glass Museum and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this evening's webinar with Martin Crampin. As many of you will know, the Stained Glass Museum holds a nationally significant collection of stained glass dating from the medieval period to the present day, and it's a collection that's still growing. The museum is an independent museum and registered charity, self-funded through paying visitors and events. During lockdown, we are unable to welcome visitors, so by purchasing a ticket for this lecture, you are making a direct contribution to the museum in these uncertain times. So thank you. So now um, it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce this evening's speaker, Martin Crampin. And I'm hoping he's going to appear on the screen in just a moment. Evening, Martin. Uh, some of you might recognise Martin because he's become a bit of a TV star this week. Uh, on Monday night, uh, BBC4 launched a new programme, The Story of Welsh Art. And uh, we saw Martin on screen in front of the Lanrider Jesse Tree, uh, a fantastic uh, piece of medieval stained glass in Lanrider Church in Wales. Uh, so do hunt out that programme if you haven't seen it already. We'll pop the link in the chat so you can find it later. Um, Martin has also worked with the Stained Glass Museum in the past. We had a really fantastic, memorable study weekend in North Wales, um, I think four years ago now, um, in which Martin showed us some of the delights that Wales has to offer um, in terms of stained glass and, and also church architecture. Martin has worked on a series of research projects researching different aspects of the visual culture of Wales while based at the University of Wales Centre for Advanced Welsh and Celtic Studies in Aberystwyth. His primary interests have been aspects of ecclesiastical art and medievalism, and this also forms the primary focus of his artistic practice, which is inspired by the patterns and images found in medieval decorative arts. He's also a designer and a photographer specialising in the production of guides to stained glass. And many of you will also know that he has uh, developed a really significant resource, which is an online catalogue, Stained Glass in Wales, which was launched in 2011. Um, and his first major monograph, Stained Glass from Welsh Churches, was published in 2014. He's also recently written a book depicting St David that was published last year. Um, which is really a foretaste of his Welsh, stain, Welsh stain, saints from Welsh churches, um, which is in preparation, coming soon, hopefully later this year. And we're delighted that it's actually this topic that Martin's going to be speaking to us tonight about Welsh saints in stained glass. So over to you, Martin. Hey, thank you, Jasmine, and it's good to see everybody, or not see everybody, to um, have a sense that you're there, um, out there. Um, and um, yes, well, Saints in Stained Glass. Um, what I want to show you is uh, a sort of an overview, really, of the imagery of saints uh, in uh, churches in Wales. And there's going to be a particular focus on St. David. We've just had the Feast of St. David on the 1st of March, as you'll know. Um, but these images of David um, offer us a particularly uh, striking perspective on uh, a number of makers uh, working at the time. I'm going to be focusing mainly on the late 19th century and the 20th century. Um, and this way of looking at a particular subject, I think, gives us a, a very different way of looking at uh, the, the um, the artists, the designers, the makers of stained glass um, during the period, which I don't think we've really sort of done before. Um, Wales, um, okay, this, this is not working. Okay, it's working now. Um, yeah, so Wales is, um, has, a, I suppose we can say, a landscape of saints. The um, imagery of Welsh saints is uh, distributed across Wales, um, but what we find is we find churches with the names of saints in their place names. So David or Dewi Sant, Dewi Sant, we find um, in uh, the names of places and the churches. So Llan, which is um, the old word for the enclosure or became uh, used for the word for church. So Llan Dewi is the church of David or the parish of David. Uh, and the, in David's case, his cult was spread widely across South Wales, so over in Monmouthshire, 
um, and in um, uh, Pembrokeshire, obviously, this and David's. Um, and here, another another little very, very brevy I'll talk about a bit later in Cerdigion, uh, which was associated with, um, with David in the early life of David, uh, which is written at the end of the 11th century. Uh, the, the story there is that David preached and the ground rose beneath him uh, and the church there, a bit of substantial church, is built on, on a little hill uh, in, in the village. Um, now, of course, the images of saints would have been found uh, right across Wales uh, in the churches in the medieval period, but we have so little of this medieval imagery left now. Um, this is a, a particularly uh, useful example for us at Llandorog, back up in North Wales. And uh, here we've got a number of uh, figures of saints in the topmost uh, part of the east window, uh, and they're probably all in their original positions. Uh, and across uh, across the top here, we've got Machech, um, uh, Winifred or Gwenfrewi, and we've got Frideswide and Catherine, and then at the top we've got Asaf and Daniel. Now uh, we know who these saints are because helpfully. Um, they have uh, inscriptions with them. Catherine we can identify uh, easily with the wheel uh, and Winifred is shown here with a sword. Um, now the question I would like to su suggest to you is if we didn't have the inscription there would we know that this was Winifred? And this is a problem we've got because we have um, surviving figures but because we don't understand uh, well enough the medieval iconography of these uh, Welsh saints um, it's very hard to know necessarily who we're looking at so the inscription here helps us and obviously the sword because um, she had her head chopped off uh, before her head was restored by Baino, uh according to her life. So the sword might point us towards Winifred but not, ne not necessarily so. Um, we have a few other examples where we uh, know that they were Welsh saints. This is also at Llanrida, we mentioned the Jesse tree, uh, we know at Llanrida early on, um, and these drawings were done uh, in around about 1800, um, and they uh, are drawings of bits of stained glass which are no longer there, inscriptions that are no longer there. However, you can just make out uh, uh, with this image of Baino, the inscription survived obviously around then, this mitre could well be the mitre that's found in the fragments in the west window of the church now. Um, so we know that there were these uh, these saints obviously um, up in North East Wales, not very far or not so far from uh, Holywell where um, uh, Winifred and Baino were, were important. Um, Here's a, a tantalising uh, piece of inscription. Um, it says Sanct Davy, D-A-V-Y. It's at Llanrachwin in the Cymru Valley. Uh, and uh, here's the whole window on the right. Uh, and another figure here with just the word Sanct uh, Holy or the Blessed. Um, and here again, we're fortunate that we have uh, an early drawing of the window. Uh, not particularly accurate, it sort of demonstrates the original layout, we can see how it correlates with the, the crucifixion, the mounds of the crucifixion here. Uh, uh, a couple of figures left, not the Michael unfortunately, but we can see here, we have Sanct David, we've got St David here, and we've got St Ruchwin, who's the uh, the patron of the church up at St Ruchwin, uh, he's been moved across there, so we've got a, we've got a head there uh, uh, and a bit of a figure, uh, and here we've got evidence that we did have a David here, um, but this is about all we've got. Uh, of uh, medieval imagery of David um, in stained glass. Now, of course, uh, it's not until the Gothic revival in the mid-19th century that we start to see imagery and colour being introduced into Anglican churches. Um, and uh, what we find in the mid-century is that the imagery is nearly all biblical. Um, so if we have saints, we have uh, apostles, uh, evangelists, uh, biblical scenes, very little from non-biblical imagery uh, uh, in the windows. Um, so here's some early examples. These are David Evans uh, figures from Bangor Cathedral. Um, where we've got Peter, John and Paul. Uh, and uh, in his uh, wonderful style, um, these were formerly in the east window, uh, but now survive in the cathedral at the west end. Um, but they contrast with what we find here. Now, this is the Roman Catholic Church in Newport, 
uh, right in the opposite corner of Wales. Um, and here in 1840, uh, are what I uh, the, the earliest examples of 19th century uh, stained glass depicting saints uh, that I've found so far in Wales. Uh, and we've got, we would have had the Virgin uh, in the center uh, on either side, St. David and St. Woolus or Gwintlu, uh, who was uh, known locally as, as Woolus. Uh, and of course, the parish church of St. Woolus was just up the hill uh, in Newport, up to the top of Stowe Hill. And here we've got the Catholic Church uh, really laying claim to this early history of uh, Welsh uh, saints uh, and, uh, and, and claiming them for themselves very much. Um, and we've got this elsewhere. Th these, were, these uh, as you can see, they've lost their original backgrounds. They've been reset in the, uh, in the I think, the, the South Isle, uh, displaced by a, a more recent window of, of the 1890s, I think, in the, in the East window. Um, so here again, we've got uh, John Harbin's window at Pantasef. Again, uh, now this is a Catholic church. Very fascinating history. This was um, built by uh, Viscount Fielding um, in, around 1850. However, he converted to Catholicism uh, in 1850 and then gave um, the uh, window to the Capuchin Friars. Uh, great controversy, huge controversy over it. Um, so the, the church became a Catholic, but again, they've chosen again far away from the medieval cult of David up in uh, north northeast Wales, not far again from Holywell. Uh, we've got a church dedicated to David, the patron saint of Wales, so they're, they're laying claim to David in, in the, uh, the patronage of, of the church. Uh, and again, also not very far away, uh, the uh, famous uh, Jesuit college at St. Beno's in Tremachion. Here we've got uh, Beno restoring the head of, of Winifred Grenrewi uh, in the chapel uh, of St. Beno's. This is a window by William Wales. And again, you know, very interesting that they're choosing Beno, a Welsh saint, to be the patron of their new college in Wales. Um, of course, the tradition, what's different about the Catholic Church, of course, is that the tradition of depicting saints uh, hadn't gone away. The opportunities were few uh, in, the, in the time when, uh, when Catholicism was restricted. But following emancipation, when they were able to start building churches again, as they did in the 1830s, 1840s in Newport and, and elsewhere here at Abergavenny, uh, we've got uh, relatively early um, saints, in this case, uh, local martyrs as well, depicted here. Um, so these are much more recent Welsh saints. Um, Charles Baker uh, hung up Usk uh, in the uh, uh, in the I lost the date 1679. Um, so again, these more recent martyrs are being uh, imaged in the windows as well. And um, so it's rather later that we find Welsh saints uh, being depicted in windows in Anglican churches. Uh, and these are the earliest I've come across in Wales. These are at Merthyr Mawr down in Glamorgan. And we've got David and Taylor, uh, the church dedicated to Taylor um, at Merthyr Mawr. Um, again, what's interesting about these is uh, I think what we're finding with these saints is it's driven by uh, an antiquarian interest, I think, uh, among uh, Anglican, sometimes Anglican clergy. Um, and these uh, interesting group of Celtic Revival crosses um, uh, in the churchyard are of the Nicol family, who were the, uh, the local squires, local gentry. Um, and I think it's their influence. Again, they, they were obviously interested in uh, the, uh, the early inscribed stones, which there were a number uh, actually around Merthyr Mawr. There's some in their own sort of garden, really, an old chapel in their garden. So they, they were obviously in touch with this early history. Uh, and we've got the same thing up at Llanamalthwy, where we've got uh, Reverend John Williams, who was an antiquarian, a uh, founder member of the uh, Cambrian Archaeological Association, uh, and it was his church here at Llanna Mouthy where we find not only St David at one side of uh, Christ, but also St Tadecho, the, uh, the patron of the church. Uh, and it's this th these kind of pairings of uh, a local saint with a national or more often a, a diocesan saint um, that we find uh, uh, sort of early on in the 1870s, 1880s in particular. So here at Bottle with our church dedicated to St Margaret, uh, in the porch, uh, we've got Margaret, and on the other side, Kentigan, um, known in Wales as Kendarian, who uh, was the, the patron of St Asaph, uh, a complicated business in St Asaph, where you've got St Asaph, who's sort of the patron, but the, the, the sea was founded by Kentigan and passed on to Asaph. So sometimes we get Asaph uh, as, the, uh, as represent, representing the diocese, and sometimes we've got Kentigan as here. 
Uh, but these are quite uh, unusual to find these saints around at this date here. We've got David at Lampeter. He was one of two windows installed when the church at Lampeter was opened in 1870. Uh, but not in a prominent position, just as um, uh, Kentigan and Margaret were in the in the porch um, uh, at uh, Bottle with uh, We've got uh, uh, Daniel Bell's uh, wonderful image of David at Lampeter is in the South Isle, um, well away from the East End of the sanctuary. And again, it's this kind of peripheral nature of the uh, imagery of saints, which we find uh, in the 1870s. Um, so here, this, this is back to Bango. This, this is the window that replaced David Evans window. Uh, uh, this is by Clayton Bell, put in the Tony Gilbert Scott's restoration. And we've got uh, a number of Welsh saints mixed in with the, the Latin doctors as well. Um, so we've got the representations of, of the, um, the four patrons of the four uh, ancient Welsh dioceses, so David, Daniel, uh, Kentigan, um, and we've also got uh, Asaf, um, uh, and a few other saints as well. So, but they're, they're, they're kind of tucked away. We've got the biblical scenes below in the window uh, and it's the uh, Welsh saints that we find uh, at the top. Uh, here again, another tracery window, very nice uh, depiction here of St. Sariol, again by Cl Clayton and Bell, also in North Wales. This is Penmai Mawr on the North Wales coast. Uh, lovely image of uh, St. Sariol. Uh, below, interestingly, we've got St. Hilda and St. Canute, uh, not somebody you come across every day, particularly not in Wales. Uh, but again, I think the, the reason for these uh, northern saints here uh, is the number of holiday makers that were uh, English holiday makers that were coming across the North, Wales, North Wales coast uh, in the uh, later 19th century. One of whom, of course, was Gladstone, who was uh, uh, associated with the church. Um, so, as I said, it's in the 1880s when we start to see more Welsh saints being depicted in churches. Um, this is uh, Newbridge on Wye, uh, where we've got a sanctuary apse with a set of windows by Kemp, uh, relatively early windows by Kemp. Um, and uh, in the sanctuary, uh, we've got uh, biblical figures, Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, but we do have this set of three Welsh saints, uh, David with St. Clea and St. Avan. Uh, and they've uh, got local dedications near by uh, Santlia and uh, Sanavan. Um, and of course, David is here because uh, Newbridge is in the Diocese of St. Of St. David's. Uh, so the Diocese of St. David's stretch right across, as I said earlier, right across Mid Wales to um, the Herefordshire border. Um, and here we've got a, a very young, very youthful David. Um, and I'll come back to this later, but this is a, a really rather young, youthful uh, bishop. Now, of course, the image of saints wasn't limited to stained glass. Uh, and uh, we get saints uh, depicted on Rhodoses. Uh, as here at Barmouth, we've got uh, St. Bride, Bodvan, and David here. David's here is holding a, uh, looks like a, really like a little millennium, it's a little leak, of course. Um, and um, this imagery of David um, starts to uh, associate, I suppose, with, with the national imagery of Wales. We'll see some more examples of that as we go on. Um, now, these standing figures uh, gradually increase in number, but the number of hagiographical scenes uh, from the lives of the saints are relatively few. Um, this is one example, a little bit later in 1912, this really important window by Robert Newbury, who we'll come back to again later on. Um, Robert Newbury made a huge number of windows across South Wales, a London-based uh, artist, London-based designer. Um, but uh, made a lot of windows in South Wales. And here we've got a window with the four patrons of the, the diocese. So we've got Daniel uh, and uh, Dovrick representing uh, the Llandaff diocese. He's the usual, um, the preferred uh, patron, for, if you're going to pick one uh, for, for Llandaff. Um, and uh, then you've got um, Kentigan again, and you can see the enlargement of him there with holding the, um, the fish with a ring in its mouth. Uh, and, and then David. And below, we've got a set of scenes from uh, the life of David. Uh, and this church, again, is, is St. David's Aneath. So it was dedicated to David. Um, and uh, these scenes uh, begin to come uh, beneath some of the uh, standing figures as Pridella scenes. Uh, so now, another example of the same kind of thing for uh, saints here at Abadea um, and, and here featuring the, um, the, the local saint Elvan. Uh, who uh, is probably made up really. It all comes from the Lucius legend, um, but it was uh, embellished uh, at, uh, at the time. Uh, and uh, we've got a series of uh, scenes of the life of, of, life of Lucius uh, and Elvan below, which all come from sort of traditions in Bean and the Book of Llandaf um, uh, and were further developed by Yolo Morganog in the uh, late 18th and 19th century. 
we'll come back to this window again. These are the scenes below, uh, including um, going to the Pope uh, and uh, coming back to baptize Lucius and his death at Glastonbury. Um, these uh, these scenes from the lives of the saints, as I said, are relatively unusual, and that makes this set at uh, the Church of St David, now kind of cathedral, uh, all the more special. Um, so this big Catholic church built right in the centre of Cardiff boasts uh, four windows with eight scenes. Uh, they look very much like the work of Mayer and co, uh, probably about 1897. Some confusion about exactly where they were positioned initially in the church. The church was bombed and there was a lot of reordering there. But what we have now, and they're a little bit patched up, uh, unfortunately, but and what we have now is this wonderful series of eight scenes. So here we've got the birth of David with uh, Non there. Um, uh, looking uh, um, rather composed after giving birth in a storm. You can see the flashes of thunder behind, of, of lightning behind, and uh, and a handprint of the rock, which again is all come comes from the life, Rigovach's life of, uh, of David. Uh, and, uh, and further scenes as well. So we've got him preaching at Llandoe Brevi. Um, you can see in the far left corner here, him raising a, a, a boy who died on the way to Llandoe Brevi. And here we've got an enlargement here of um, uh, David um, uh, um, composing the canon law uh, among, uh, among his saints in the monastery. So um, again, these are all mostly taken from uh, the life of Rickerbach from the 11th century. Um, but there are very few, uh, so, so some of these um, scenes I've not found anywhere else at all. Um, so this is really quite an interesting set, uh, uh, very, very unique. And, and I suppose it's a surprise to us really that we don't find more of these. Um, for David, as I, say, um, as I said, St. David's uh, so common right across Wales. There's so many images of David in stained glass. Uh, in churches in Wales, but you know there aren't so many scenes from the life um, that we get as we do here. Um, the scene that we do get most of all, I think, is this sort of rather generic uh, image of David preaching. Um, you can see here two very different examples by Clayton and Bell. Um, and um, uh, What's interesting, you can see here, he's, he seems to be standing on a mound. So again, there's an allusion here to his preaching at Llanowy Brevi, although that was preaching at a synod. And so that there's sort of some, uh, in the life, he's he's preaching to uh, other bishops and he's raised up among other bishops. Um, but uh, here we've got a, a group of uh, common people, I suppose you'd say, uh, gathered around him. And the other interesting thing, and I'll come back to this again, is that just the difference in the way David is dressed. So here he's dressed in full vestments uh, with a mitre on his head, and here he's dressed as a as a simple simple man uh, with a, uh, uh, it's a cloak and uh, uh, this this image of David and what David looked like is something we'll come back to. Uh, so here again at Pontypridd, we've got another image here of David uh, preaching at Llandoe Brevi. Um, and this image of images of saints preaching, um, it, it becomes, I suppose, a sort of a default uh, scene that you tend to get if they weren't sure how else to depict a saint then you'd be preaching to the local people or converting the local people uh, and of course this idea that these saints um, uh, founded the churches that bear their names uh, is here so so St. Bian this church on the Hlipi Lich at Bodian um, is, he's described here as a saint confessor and founder of this church converting the people um, uh, but a big scenes like this this is a very large uh, scene by George Hunt an artist you don't come across very often uh, very unusual and uh, wonderful scenes. Um, there's one on the other side of Cadvan as well. So, as I've said, the imagery of David is interesting because it allows us to see uh, differences in the way that different firms uh, depicted him. So uh, here's Morris and Co. We're going out of Wales to win it. I'm sure there was somebody from Scotland. Hello. This is in Glasgow University. Uh, a figure obviously designed by Burne Jones. Uh, and here we've got another example of it being reused uh, in 1910, the church in Wrexham, and again in Llanelli, where he's depicted in a background uh, with a sort of a landscape in the background, as opposed to the uh, the abstract sort of floriate design we've got here. Um, now, we all know that uh, this is the way that stained glass was made. Uh, they would uh, make a cartoon, full-size cartoon uh, of a design uh, on which the uh, the glass was laid, uh, the glass was painted and cut on top of this uh, cartoon. Um, and these cartoons could be reused again. And that's exactly what's going on here. You can see the very close correlation between uh, these two. And sometimes, as you can see here, the image could be reversed. Uh, and then obviously, there could be a change of color uh, of the glass. Um, 
and so uh, you know there might be more or less uh, surrounds uh, and here we've got the insertion of the dove now the dove is david's uh, symbol simply for the don't have any evidence really of medieval iconography of, of Welsh saints. Um, but what we do have with David, and, and unusually for David, uh, he's almost co consistently shown with the dove. Now the dove again comes from the life of David. Uh, it was said to have settled on his shoulder when he was preaching at Llanthoe Brevi. And there's also an earlier reference when he was a, a, a young man uh, where it would come and sing hymns to him and it was seen by his fellow pupils. Um, so this image of David with the dove is very common and we'll see it throughout uh, the further images. Um, so uh, what about other firms then? Uh, well, here's a window by Shrigley and Hunt uh, that was made for St David's Cathedral. Uh, it seems to be given by uh, Arthur Hunt himself in 1909. Um, but the image of David um, is clearly a, a reproduction of a early, slightly earlier window made uh, right over on the far side of Powys near the Herefordshire border at Gladys Street. Uh, and you can see again, it's, it's very clearly the same design, uh, exactly uh, uh, the same in sort of all, all details really, but with different colours again, but the actual design seems to be used um, precisely again. We've got the dove coming in uh, at the side here. Um, now this was reused uh, again uh, a bit later probably, I'm not really quite sure of the date of this window at Llanavon uh, in Ceredigion, not far away from me here in Aberystwyth, um, but look what's happened here. We've got uh, Asaf on the left and David on the right, but at Llanavon we've got the same figures but the identities of the saints have been transposed. So we've got David, uh, or St Asaf has become David and David has become uh, Asaf. Uh, and again, the, the design is exactly the same. Uh, and, the, and you could say, well, there's no reason why not. There's, there's very little to uh, distinguish between them. We've got a dove been inserted here above David appropriately. Uh, and what's to tell you the difference between the two of them? Um, there's another example I found of Shrigley and Hunt uh, using the same design here at Tregaron. Uh, I've also found another one in Northern Ireland. Um, and so, you know, goodness knows how many more of these are. Um, the thing about images of David, of course, I've uh, really only been traveling around and researching images in Wales, um, but because uh, David is, as a patron of Wales is used in various windows that represent the four nations or the three nations of the United Kingdom, sometimes with Ireland as well, we get David representing Wales. This happens particularly uh, around the time of the First World War and after the First World War, when you get more Wales put up and they uh, then represent each of the, the, the four nations or the three nations. So there will be, I'm sure, uh, many examples of images of David uh, across England and Scotland uh, and possibly Ireland as well. So uh, it'd be interesting to see, uh, match up some of these um, designs that we're seeing now, perhaps with other places as well. Um, so here's one uh, uh, slightly earlier with the bell. This is a Pendarium, which is right at the top of the South Wales Valleys. Um, and uh, again, you'd associate it with Glamorgan. But here, the choice of saints here, David and Andrew, actually reflects the fact that Pendarium fell in the old uh, diocese of St David's. Uh, and uh, of course, St David and St Andrew are co-patrons of the cathedral uh, to this day. Uh, and unlike what we've seen with uh, Morris and Co., and we see with Shrigley and Hunt. Here's three examples, uh, I don't have many more actually, um, by Clayton and Bell, and they're all completely different. Uh, they're all, yes, they're all depicted as bishops. Uh, one's as a rather older man, uh, this one at Holywell is a much younger man. Now we saw the details beneath these uh, scenes uh, earlier on with them preaching at Llanthoe Brevi. Uh, and this uh, window at uh, Wrexham is actually the Welsh Fusiliers Memorial, uh, important west window um, with a lot of Welsh imagery in it. Um, but as you can see, they're, they're completely different. They're not reuse of the same design at all. Now, I can't tell you, of course, that they weren't reusing another saint um, for these uh, cartoons. But interestingly, they don't reproduce the same image of David uh, in, in these windows. Um, and the same can be said with Burleson and Grills. Now, there are about 15 or so I've found by Burleson and Grills uh, images of David, again, dating from late 1880s uh, up to the 1930s, uh, well, probably 1930s, certainly into the 1920s. And again, th they're all, as you can see with these, just these three examples, they tend to use roughly the same colour palette, um, but they're not exactly the same. I've only found one design which is pretty much the same as another one. It was this one at Hryada, uh, which I found uh, elsewhere. Um, so 
although they're, they're the same kind of image of David, uh, you can see they're very richly dressed, uh, a lot of patterning on the vestments, uh, these tall late medieval mitres uh, and the uh, elaborate croziers, um, sometimes holding the cathedral here, as you can see. Um, in only one instance here where we've got the dove, uh, also a harp, again, re a reference to Wales uh, with the harp at the bottom here. Frida Muin is, uh, is up in uh, Flintshire, right up in North East Wales. Um, but again, they're not reproducing exactly the same image. Now we can, sell, uh, we can see the same thing with Kemp. Um, and again, th these firms, I, I always think, um, uh, this surprised me because we have a narrative of these firms churning out designs over and over again. They made, of course, hundreds and hundreds of windows. Uh, and uh, there, there is a narrative in which these firms re reproduce their designs again, over and over and over again. But actually, we don't find that. Now, I've got even more examples of windows by Kemp. Uh, around about 20 or so, uh, aided, of course, by the corpus, which uh, uh, is our, our guide to the windows by Kemp, because we don't have anything like that for Bonus and Grill, so I'm busy trying to identify windows by them to try and uh, uh, add to their number. Um, but again, we've got a similar kind of image. Uh, we've got, uh, again, a very richly uh, ornamented figure, uh, a late medieval mitre, uh, um, but um, they are all different. Uh, and they change gradually. Again, we've got a, quite a young David uh, in some of these examples. We saw that one from Newbridge earlier on. Uh, we've got a very young, youthful David. Uh, but sometimes we've got a bearded David as well, as we hope to here at Bob Maris. Again, amazingly uh, ornamented here with all this very kind of jeweled um, um, appearance of the, the vestments. But they're not identical um, to each other, as you would, ex as you know, perhaps some people might expect, um, uh, with what we know of the way these firms worked. Uh, and again, that they date uh, right from the eighteen uh, eighties. Um, I think that one of um, at Newbridge is the earliest one I've come across, uh, and then go on till uh, the nineteen thirties when they closed. Uh, again, we've got the imagery of the dove at his ear. We've got the cathedral here sometimes. Uh, that one's not a very accurate description of the cathedral, but um, some of them are. Uh, we've also got um, here, he's very clearly uh, depicted as Archbishop Arch Eskom, uh, at the top. Um, and um, this refers again to the fact that at Thunderway Brevi, he was, uh, he was raised up uh, on the mound and shown to be a superior or uh, preeminent among all the other bishops. Uh, and uh, of course, this was played on. Uh, I mean, it's a deliberate ploy, of course, in the uh, in the 11th century, in the 12th century, when they were trying to raise the status of St. David um, and St. David's. Um, so again, I've said that some of these images by Kemp are bearded, not so many of them. Um, if you want beards, go to Harman's. They did good beards, uh, as you can see here at Dallas. Uh, and uh, it's uh, another example here. I really love this window at Tembe uh, and, and here at Wrexham. Um, at Tembe, we can see again, we've got an image of the cathedral in the background here, as well as the church that he's holding. And just these details, that the leak here, the harp in the, the borders. Um, well, we can see, and he's stooped over. He's an old man. Uh, you know, it, it feels as though he's he's using the crozier to lead on um, uh, as well. An old wise man, I suppose, is the image that we, we've got here. It's quite interesting that this is, again, fairly consistent. Uh, I don't have, again, quite as many um, images of David by Harbin, but he seems to be fairly consistently shown as this old wise man. Uh, uh, and, and again, in full, full bishops, uh, archbishops vestments. Now, Heaton and Butler and Bain give us something really very different, and it's striking how different it is. Uh, you can see that immediately. Uh, the two earliest examples I've got uh, are about the same in date. Uh, at uh up on the North Wales coast, up in my Maur, and down in the South Wales Valleys at Gellygair. Now, what have we got here? Um, what we've got is uh, a very distinctive uh, image where he's wearing this sort of round, early form of mitre, like a round cap. Um, he's wearing this breastplate, which is like the breastplate of the, the priesthood, which is known as a rationale. Um, and where is this coming from? Well, it seems he's reading um, Warren's History and Investments of the, of the Catholic Church, uh, which came out in the 1880s. And uh, he's using that description of what Celtic saints used to look like. Um, now, the, um, 
the sources for this are a bit few and far between, but he's looking at Irish reliquaries and various things. Uh, and uh, so this, this imagery of the, the pectoral cross and this short staff here, um, and the sandals and this particular form of mitre is something which Heathen Butler and Bain picked up. Nobody else did. I've not seen it in any other firms at all. And they used it remarkably consistent, consistently. So you can see here at Geshley Gaia where he's covering <coughs> Um, it's basically the same kind of image. Um, so again, they, they're using this style of bishop, um, but uh, they're, again, they're not uh, reproducing the same cartoon all the time. So here's some later examples uh, at Whitford uh, and at Flambada, much later at Flambada with much brighter colours, as you can see. Um, there's a slight change in that they changed the, the mitre to this sort of round band. And you can also see the Celtic tonsure, which th this reveals, uh, where it's shaved at the front of the head. Um, uh, but again, we've got this, the rationale they're wearing and this pectoral cross here. Um, and um, it's remarkably consistent all the way through. Um, uh, I remember a few years ago when I was looking at these, I thought, oh, I've seen this before, I've seen this before. And it was only then when I joined the dots, and I realized that every single one of them were by Hitler and Butler and Bain, and I couldn't find any that didn't conform to this kind of image. The other thing we can see uh, in these uh, 20th century windows by the firm is that there's uh, this little bit of uh, interlaced ornament at the top and bottom here. And also um, it's in the, the, the chasuble here uh, where we've got lovely Celtic ornament there. I'll show you a design. Uh, um, uh, detail that later. Um, so again, there's this sense that they're, they're looking for a slightly different kind of image of bishop. They're looking to the West, they're looking to Wales, to Ireland, to uh, an idea of what a Celtic bishop might have looked like. Uh, here's uh, four of the um, saints at uh, Dungavolchi, uh, the earlier ones. Uh, and the thing I want to show you here is the bishops are very different to two of the others. So St. Gwynion, who's the patron of the church, is shown in this very simple um, dress here. Uh, and we find the same thing with St. Serial, who wasn't thought to be a bishop. So there he's dressed as very plain monk, uh, bareheaded, uh, with this brown cowl over him. Uh, and um, these are, you know, they're, more, they're differentiating between different kinds of saint, uh, as, as was thought of them. So come back to Abadir uh, and the work of Robert Newbury. Now, uh, if you keep an eye on the two figures in the middle, we've got Elvan and David, uh, and you'll find the same thing here. Now, unfortunately, uh, on my screen, my, I'm blocking that. Does that. I can move that around, can't I? Um, I assume I'm moving that around for everybody else as well. Um, so we've got David uh, here on this side, uh, and um, we've got uh, Taylor over here. So this figure of uh, Elvan is being reused um, as uh, uh, Taylor here at Bishopston in the Gower. Uh, and then this one of David is the same David. And what, what's remarkable about uh, Robert Newbury is that I've found about, uh, I think, nearly a dozen of these, um, and they are all exactly the same. Um, so uh, here's uh, another Washington about 1920. Uh, I've captured that incorrectly, that's at Miskin. Um, and Slavihagaridathon. Uh, you can see they're all exactly the same image. Um, now, I showed you an image at Pontypridd earlier. Uh, there's a, a set of windows depicting um, the uh, early British church, uh, interesting set of windows in the North Isle. Um, and the west window there is really rather good. Now, for all of the windows at the church were designed by Robert Newbury, or so I thought. Um, and it was actually when I was finishing the book on um, St David, that I picked up this window because I found a match for it uh, down in Monkton Priory, this image on the right of St David, uh, which was rather different. Now, uh, what happened was uh, I was thinking about this, and I, I looked at the window, the window in uh, Pontypridd was really rather good. Newbury's work is a bit much muchness, really. Uh, you know, it's, it's the epitome, I suppose, of uh, rather repetitive late Gothic revival work. But the colouring in this window was really rather good. The mic at the top was superb, and I always regarded it as one of his better windows. But having spotted the same image of David uh, down at Moncton Priory, um, and I had realised that I'd attributed that to Percy Bacon Brothers through the BSMGP uh, uh, lists, 
uh, and it kind of, I, I looked at it and thought, well, is, is this right? Uh, and, and it struck me how different this win window was. You can see the figure of George there, very like some of the Percy Bacon Brothers uh, windows that I've seen elsewhere. Uh, and right at the last minute, um, when I designed the book, uh, I reattributed it to Percy Bacon Brothers, um, left this to spread as it was. Uh, I was also interested in the way that uh, we didn't have the kind of Gothic revival background here. We've got this uh, organic framework here that we associate with the arts and crafts movement um, in these windows. Um, so that was that until I discovered I made a mistake uh, because uh, I'd actually identified the wrong windows at Monkton Priory with the work of Pace and Percy Bacon Brothers. Uh, and I looked at it all again and I found uh, a match for this image of George or a close match for this in another window by Robert Newbury. So I, I, I made a mistake there. But I, I'm telling you this because it's a reminder that the information we have about these windows is not a given. Uh, it requires, you know, these windows are not signed on the whole. Um, they need to be researched and usually we're down to stylistic um, uh, uh, traits to try and identify the makers of these windows. The BSNGP lists, of course, a, a tremendous help in this and, and have helped identify further windows by um, uh, identifying similar traits. Um, but anyway, so uh, <laughs> a little diversion there just to kind of give you a bit of an insight of what goes on in trying to identify these makers and, and also try and date these windows sometimes. Um, nonetheless, uh, the, coming back to where I started with this, um, yes, these Robert Newbury windows uh, are generally all the same, but I have got two or three variants uh, and one of these is here at Pontypridd. Um, now we've looked at the way in which um, stylistically windows repeated themselves and in terms of the way that cartoons were reused again and again. Um, and of course, we have a narrative in which the arts and crafts would kind of challenge that system by trying to bring originality uh, and uh, a fresh approach, a freshness of approach, uh, not churning windows out in the way that we associate with Clayton the Bell or Burleson Grills. Um, so what do we find when we look at the windows of the arts and crafts movement, uh, and the artists of the arts and crafts movement? Those are by Christopher Wall. And what strikes me about this uh, is that iconographically it's basically the same kind of image. Um, now the craftsmanship behind it is, is on another level obviously uh, and uh, some people say well the colours are better and everything and so they are but it's the same kind of image of David we've got here uh, in a war memorial window at Old Bradley's just across the border in, uh, in Shropshire uh, not far from Shrewsbury. Um, and, and here again, we've got basically the same image, also by Hall, uh, among the wonderful windows in the Lady Chapel at, at Gloucester Cathedral. And as you can see, uh, 20 years between them or thereabouts, uh, and it's basically the same figure reused um, with, a, with a different face, um, but uh, it's basically the same kind of David. It's not exactly the same cartoon, but um, it's the same sort of design. Um, which I find very striking. Now, there's actually a, another example of this at uh, Wickwa, uh, a window by Christopher Wall in Gloucestershire, which was kindly shared with me um, by somebody who found that. And um, again, that window is actually uh, uses the same figures of uh, George, David, and Andrew uh, at Wickwa. So again, they're reusing designs in exactly the same kind of way. Um, but with Christopher Wall, there is a twist, and it's this. Now, this amazing window at Llanunda is just completely startling, and unlike anything else we've got uh, of David at all. Uh, and, and this is where we find uh, Wall, uh, or Wall on Wall at least, um, you know, really um, doing something quite exceptional. Uh, it's, it's actually rather, I keep looking, it's a very bizarre window, really. Uh, we've got this very young, youthful David depicted in, um, in animal skins, um, standing with his leeks behind him and the daffodils in the border. Um, and it's just an extraordinary image. And we've got a, a, a mitre hovering above here. Um, but this image of David is utterly unlike anything else I've come across. Uh, and uh, really quite extraordinary. Of course, a beautiful treatment of all the uh, all the quarries here as well. It's just um, something we don't find uh, when we're looking at Bonus and Grills and uh, Clayton and Bell. But it really is quite an extraordinary image. He's kind of red cross garter things. I, I, I kind of think he's almost like a some sort of cross between Malvolio and John the Baptist. It's just remarkable. Um, so that's an exception. Um, 
here's something not quite so sexual, but very lovely. Um, and this is down in Llandegfeth in Monmouthshire, uh, where we've got, again, a, a different kind of David. It has an entirely different feel to it. Um, he's dressed here as a bishop. He's bareheaded. Um, and he's got these little details of the, the bishop here in the vestments and David and the harp down here. Um, and um, uh, I'm partly showing it to you because I don't know who it's by. I'd love to know if somebody knows. Well, I've had a discussion with several people about who this might be by. I, I think it's very much like the work of A.J. Davis, but it's not A.J. Davis because he doesn't paint like that. Um, so I wonder, wonder whether it's a student of his or, or somebody uh, associated with him or influenced by him. Um, but a lovely window. Um, does, the, the figures in the outer lights don't have the quality of A.J. Davis, uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's a, a lovely. And then he's got a harp here again, another reference to Wales, uh, but a very different kind of image of David. And just them both looking down like this in a kind of contemplative way is very different to this rather haughty, high, mighty bishops that we get uh, by the, the big firms. So other uh, windows of the 1920s here, we've got Edward War, uh, of course, uh, worked with Christopher Wall. Uh, and um, this window, again, he's rather more conventional as a bishop, but the, the lines are fresher, it's a lovely, almost Art Deco feel to this. Um, and um, here by uh, Il Armitage, early window by him, uh, made at Lels and Drury. Uh, and again, it's uh, uh, iconographically, it's rather conventional. They're elderly, elderly bishops. Here's Joan Fully Love again. Uh, interestingly, when this window was commissioned, um, they asked that it, she didn't depict David to look as though he was of such great age. Um, so uh, they were interesting that uh, we have so little comment like this of what people really thought of these windows when they went in. Um, so uh, how much longer his beard might have been in the original design, I can't tell you. Uh, but again, all in green, uh, big long beards, uh, dressed as bishops. Uh, here's a interesting set of a set of windows. Uh, and again, unfortunately, we these are single examples by these artists so they've got to compare them with in their own work. Um, perhaps other people would know their work elsewhere and uh, find interesting comparisons um, with uh, other saints they've depicted. Um, here's a super window. This, he is a disciple or uh, pupil of um, Asia Davis, uh, a lemon. Um, and one thing I want to draw your attention to here, lovely window, this at Sillian uh, Church now closed, unfortunately, near Lampeter, um, is this shape of the mitre. Um, he's used the same as, as Edward War has, and this is a, a 12th century mitre. And again, I think it's an illusion. It's, um, uh, Warren, his, uh, his mother. But this early form of mitre is something of an early bishop and shouldn't be depicted kind of like many verse as Kemp and Burns and Grills were doing. Uh, we find it as well in sculpture. This is a lovely figure um, carved, um, probably the design of um, uh, W.D. Corot, um, Corot in uh, Tangawa, Wales, right in the centre of Wales. And again, it's its uh, early form of mitre. Uh, which distinguish these uh, these figures. What does Sir David look like? This is the question, I suppose, the artist has got. And, um, uh, we've got uh, Sir William Griffith. And In the churches. But of course, it's similar then to what we find uh, with some of the other saints. His serial again from scenes of David from the life. We find him depicted like this, but in the standing figures, he's always a, as a very formal uh, bishop or archbishop. And this goes on, as I say, right uh, uh, in Cardiff, one of a couple by, by Compa from Wales. A um, uh, very grand figure. Um, and it's the same that we've got here on Coast, is we've got this contrast again between David. Uh, 
just as a bishop. We've got the same thing uh, in the 1950s by Celtic Studios. Celtic Studios, of course, um, started up in Swansea, uh, making windows, uh, first major firm to make stained glass in Wales. Uh, and through the 1950s, again, we've got David as a bishop uh, in a conventional way. But there's a change. Uh, this, sorry, this is one more again before, before I do, by uh, Powell's uh, St. Mary Swansea, where he's showing his lovely colours, uh, again, a very modest style, but still uh, as bishop with uh, the dove, as you can see here, and, and the church behind him. The change comes here, so this is Powell's again at, at Flandre Brevi, interestingly. Now here we have a day which, which brings us back to what Gospel John showed us and what we find in some of the little scenes uh, beneath the figures in some of the earlier windows. But da David very much as a traveller with a, a rugged staff, he's holding a, a Celtic bell uh, and uh, a cloak. Uh, he's a traveller, he's a travelling man. Um, now this has an echo in the church as well with this slightly earlier sculpture. Uh, where we see exactly the same David. And obviously that they showed us to pals and they said, this is the David we want uh, in our East Window, the East Window at Flandre Revy. Um, as you can see, is a, a visionary David, I suppose, you know, in, in, in this uh, sculpture, um, rather toothy as somebody said to me, but um, it's uh, uh, a very different kind of David. And what we find is that Celtic Studios then, you know, make use of this in their later windows from the late, late um, 1950s, 1960s onwards. Um, I think probably this is the earliest example of that uh, at Mountain Ash, uh, where we've got this really abrupt change within a couple of years. Uh, and it's this image of David we get again at, uh, uh, at Uplands, this lovely image, um, uh, and again at St Fagans and Aberdeer is another example. Um, and they're using this uh, this new image of David, if you like, as, as a much simpler, humbler, travelling man, uh, perhaps, you know, going around preaching um, and uh, founding churches, as the idea was. Um, and it's this kind of David that we get. Um, uh, this one at Mount Ash is interesting because it's got sort of scenes around the borders, not entirely sure exactly what they're meant to represent. He's sort of teaching at the top here and teaching a group at the bottom here. But either side here, we've got uh, David raising uh, the, um, the widow's son, um, uh, which we did see briefly at, uh, at Cardiff uh, the Cathedral earlier on. Um, and Celtic Studios carry on using this. And, and as far as I found, they never use uh, David as a bishop again uh, after the, about 1960. Um, this one, very much later, late work by them at, at, at Roach in Pembrokeshire, um, looking uh, very much like the, fit, the, the usual figure of Christ in, in this case. Um, but again, he's, he's a simple man uh, in, in sandals, not with a mitre, uh, not with those rich vestments um, uh, of, um, uh, of the bishop. And from then, uh, to finish off now, uh, you know, th there does seem to be a, a kind of a freedom uh, after this period in the 70s, 80s, up to now, in the way that David is depicted uh, and, and saints in general. So we've still got David as bishop, which we've got here by Colin Morris, uh, first major window by Glen Tower Studios, maybe Tim Lewis in Morriston. Uh, and then the other kind of David here with Frank Roper at Talbany, an, an entirely different in technique, of course, this is made to aluminium frame with this lovely um, streaky glass um, uh, super, super um, technique uh, and uh, quite, quite, quite unique. Um, and, and there is this different kind of David. So again, here we've got something which is alluding to um, the Celtic uh, history of the church. Uh, and again, another Swansea artist, Elizabeth Edmondson, uh, is using here these uh, manuscript style images with this um, uh, Celtic interlacing here. Uh, and uh, Taylor, Pagel and Dewey, they're, they're shown together because they were the three uh, that went to Jerusalem uh, in, the, in the lives of each of the saints. Uh, Taylor, Pagel and Dewey, of course, in each of the life, each of their respective lives, they're more important than the other one. Um, uh, so these are the, the three saints in her window. And, and it's a lovely combination. I, I'm not showing you the whole window here, but these bright colours of her, you know, really strong modernist aesthetic that she's picking up from the, the German artists um, early in the 80s uh, in Swansea um, with this, you know, really early medieval style of the um, uh, of the imagery here. Uh, and just to remind you, I talked about this earlier, this Heaton Butler Bay with this lovely detailing patterning, uh, which we got here with Heaton Butler Bay of St David back at... Um, Whitford up in North East Wales. So again, this allusion to the, the early church we've got here. And then just at the very end now, um, this question of what David looks like, 
uh, we've got a sort of retreat from that really in the, the last of these windows. If I can move that out of the way. Um, so we've got um, uh, Rachel Phillips' window at uh, Kledach and Helen Whitaker's big window at Abergavenny, where David is represented but not depicted as a person at all. He's shown purely by symbols. So here we've got the mound at uh, Llanvelli Brevi in Rachel's window, the dove here at the side, uh, and the shrine of David, little <laughs> leaks here as well. So he's, he's reduced to symbolism. And again, in Helen's window, we've got daffodils and the dove again, um, with, with other symbols of saints here. So we've got a, a sort of, a, uh, as I say, a, an absence of David, really, de de depicting David by his absence. So there we are. So that's a, a long overview um, of uh, all kinds of images of David. Uh, there's plenty of left out, so hopefully you can raise some of that in questions. Uh, and uh, I'll pause for now. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you, Martin. That's great. Fantastic um, look through so many uh, different windows, but all, all in Wales and all of the same saint. I think it's unusual to see so much um, in one talk. So thank you very much. Uh, we, while people are thinking of questions, um, I've got one to kick us off and I know there's a couple in the Q&A. Um, Martin, like overwhelming number of windows you showed us were single figure Saint David depicted as a single figure saint, which is, isn't unusual for saint depictions. But the, the ones that I really noted earlier on, and I think they were both in Roman Catholic contexts, were the, the narrative windows showing the, the history of the saint's life. Do those only appear in Catholic contexts? Um, no, th those ones at Cardio Cathedral are exceptional. Um, I don't think I've come across any others. And those those hagiographical scenes I showed you, like the ones at Tandere Brevi uh, and a couple of others, th th they are they do come up in, in Anglican churches, but they're nearly always um, as this, the little scenes beneath the standing figures. Um, they're never kind of the main subject of the windows, and that's why the ones at kind of Cathedral, the Church of St David, as it was, are so extraordinary because those scenes from his life, those episodes from his life, are the main subject. Of those windows and that's why they're so extraordinary um and, and yes it's so i mean you know as a comparison uh you know it's not that long ago when we could travel i remember being in durham and saw you know the big clayton bell windows of the life of cuthbert all the way down the sides of the, the cathedral you know and, and we just don't get that in wales there's not anything really like that um, and it's, it's not just Wales, I remember also going to Lincoln Cathedral, for example, and I was like, well, where is St Hugh? I had to ask somebody, are there any images of St Hugh here? Yeah, I couldn't find any. Um, so uh, there were. But, um, you know, so it, this, um, uh, this interest in St David, again, they're not in St David Cathedral. There's that one figure of St David uh, in glass. There's another, a couple of sculptures. Um, but, um, you know, we just don't have these scenes for the life that, uh, and of course, my colleagues have been working on the lies, so they asked me, oh, have you got any images of this? I said, no. <laughs> it's true, really so. So there we are. The artists of today, I suppose, we need to uh, crack on with this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's an opening there. Um, Jeff asks, what is the significance of the tassels hanging from David's cross staff? Unfortunately, I, I don't know what window he. <laughs> I, I, answer, I can't tell you, Jeff. <laughs> um, okay. And someone else noted that they, they expected to see more Welsh language in the windows. It's only a couple of times that we saw St. Dewey, not St. David. Yeah. Um, it, it, is that kind of typical of glass in, in Wales? Um, uh, yeah, uh, probably. Uh, probably, I need to stay. I'm probably guilty of cutting off too many inscriptions um, from the the slides uh, to try and give you more more image and less text. Um, the use of the Welsh language in inscriptions um, is uh, predictably in some of the areas where the Welsh language is stronger, um, but not necessarily so. Um, so yes. You've got uh, Dewey in place of David uh, in a number of examples, but um, there's probably, I mean, you probably find almost as much Latin as you do Welsh, uh, even in Edgar churches. Um, but um, yes, yeah, sometimes. And also you find it, I think, gradually more through the 20th century. It's, it's also interesting with some of the other saints, for example, where we've, I mentioned Kentigern, uh, the Mungo in Scotland, of course, um, but Kentigern uh, in Wales, but also later on we find him as Cadairn uh, in the Welsh form, 
and the same with Winifred and Gwen Vrowey. Um, you, you tend to get the Welsh forms a little bit more often uh, as the 20th century comes on. Of course, there, there's uh, the, the strength of the Welsh language and the consciousness of the Welsh language is, is stronger, and so people are choosing to use it. Um, it's probably all down to the patron, basically, um, whether the patron wants the text to be in Welsh or English, uh, and they will decide almost certainly. Thank you. You showed a, a really interesting development there when we're looking at the more modern windows and that evolution of, of the iconographic depiction of David, which does seem to kind of follow the trends of the church as well. So in the 19th century, much more focus on kind of uh, the ritualistic vestments, yeah. if you like. And then in the 20th century, that, that very striking one where David is you or I, um, mm. as the church is kind of uh, trying to become more more modern appearing, um, which is very interesting. Okay, a couple more questions have come in. Uh, Martin, do you have any idea who made the 1840s example you showed from Newport? I think it was St. Mary's Newport. Um, it, it looked like there was some enam enamel paint on the window. Yeah, more than likely. Um, not a clue. There's a couple of those early figures. There's a couple of early figures at Carmarthen as well, but I've just got no idea who might have been making them. They're, they're not um, near anything, I, anything else I've seen. Um, interesting that there's a there's a cluster of um a couple of examples in command which makes you think could there have been somebody down there making something we don't know um uh, and the same in newport i just just don't know who might have made those um which is unfortunate there's a good newspaper report on the window which i've got a good date for it um but uh, nothing to tell you who might have made it okay um you referred to a life of david that inspired some of the earlier iconography could you just mention that work again and also the history of the vestments um book in the 19th century that people just didn't quite catch the names of those um uh, so the name let me just get this right so that i don't say the wrong thing it was the liturgy and ritual of the celtic church i might have said literally the catholic church the liturgy and ritual of the celtic church 1881 by fe1 uh, and that's um uh, yeah, it was it brought to my attention by somebody I didn't find out, so I just just know who was, um, who uh, showed this to me, uh, and I was just absolutely bowled over it because I found the difference in the imagery, but not found the source. And for the, the source to be the book to be published in the eighteen eighties, directly before this, was really quite striking. I'm sorry, I've lost the, the oh, first question already. And the, the life of David. Is there more? Is there more than one? Yeah, okay. Um, David uh, has uh, several lives, uh, uh, Latin and Welsh. There's about three uh, Latin lives of David um, with slight variance between them. Um, so there's the Rigavach life is the earliest written um, uh, in the late 11th century uh, by Rigavach the Sicilian, a uh, famous family uh, in Llaman Val. Um, Sicilian was Bishop of St David's uniquely twice. Uh, he was a uh, bishop and then he resigned and then the, his successor was killed by pirates and so he went down there to serve a second term. Um, and so that's the main life we have, the main source we know of him. But there were Welsh lives as well. Uh, some of my colleagues have worked on the, the Welsh lives, uh, which again are published on our Saints uh, website actually, um, so about later. Um, so there's uh, there's those as well. But we've also got um, further traditions of David, which come up in early Welsh poetry. Uh, there's a 12th century poem uh, of David as well, to David as well, and several later poems of David. So there's other traditions as well, um, which we find in these other medieval texts. So yeah, there's a wealth of tradition about David. And the, the life, Rick of Us life is quite long, so there's quite a lot of material in it. Thank you. That, that's helpful. I think I answered that question. Um, a good question from Penny here, which is more about the Welsh language um, and, and more general, actually, than just saints. But are there any Welsh language inscriptions in Welsh windows of 16th century date or earlier, either saints names or anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, uh, I know. Um, uh, Madeline Gray pointed out a bit of English to me in one of one or two of the windows, um, which we thought was unusual. But I've not come across any Welsh in any inscriptions from the medieval glass. No, no. And they're flooding in these questions now. Are you okay for a bit longer? <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea what the time is, so I'm just, <laughs> just tell you. I was thinking, oh, no one's telling me to stop, so I hope I'm going to. <laughs> um, Suzanne asks, "What's your favourite saint's window in Wales, and why?" Oh, Suzanne, I don't have favourites. Um, I, I have interesting windows. Um, 
interesting windows. Um, I love this by Rachel, by the way. Um, uh, but um, do I have a favourite window? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the wall at window at Salander is just amazing. It's just astonishing. Do I really like it? I don't really know, but it's just wonderful. It, it's an amazing window, um, but I can't say it's my favourite. You know, I'm not very good with favourites. Uh, people ask me about what's your favourite church. Well, I don't have favourites. You know, I, I mean, they're interesting windows, and I've tried to show you some of them. Um, but um, sometimes the most interesting are not the ones I like the best. Um, I'm still trying to think. Of, well, I tell you what, I, mean, I like. You know, this was on the front of the book. I love this. Uh, the, these windows by Celtic Studios um, that they were making about 1960. Uh, I think they're great. They're lovely dynamic leading. Uh, and uh, this is new fresh expression. I'm sure that uh, we've got John Edwards working there at the time. It was freshening up their style. I know the um, a lot of the windows were designed by Howard Martin, but quite how involved he was day to day because he was um, principal or vice principal of the, um, the college at the time and teaching. Uh, tremendously influential teacher quite how much she was also designing uh, I, i'm not quite sure um, but um, th those windows by by celtic studios uh, around about 1960 early 1960 i think they're wonderful wonderful depictions of the saints okay two more then um the legend about the dove that settled on st david's shoulder can you just um mention yeah. that again <laughs> Um, so uh, when he was preaching at Llanthoe Bravi, the ground rose beneath him, uh, a dove settled on his shoulder. Um, uh, and the same, uh, th there's a separate part of the story, they're both in Rick of Us Life, um, earlier on when he was a, a pupil, I think, um, I can't think now whether it was at the time when he was a pupil of Paulinus, but there's a couple of episodes where he's, he's a pupil um, and uh, the his fellow pupils see this dove settling on his shoulder or and singing hymns to him so uh that's uh, uh it sort of comes up twice in, in the life uh yeah and it's it's remarkable i mean the, the dove is very helpful to us as well um we talk about um how it's hard to identify uh well, i said about how it's hard to identify medieval images of saints because we don't have the iconography and um, the same thing can be said if you find a reredos uh, in a church where you've got a line of saints it's also you've got the same problem quite often you don't know who they are um, and, and so you're, you're scratching over anything now if you've got a dove on the shoulder then brilliant you know you've got a david um, but other times you might have a, maybe a, 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 a deer or an animal with them well you know a deer could be a number of different saints it's not, never quite clear exactly who they're referring to but if you've got a dove it's almost certainly david but but unfortunately also i think it's karanog also has a dove um, uh, associated with him with a couple of images as well so it's not not entirely proof but generally if you find uh, an image of a saint with a dove um, it's going to be david having said that it's gregory as well i think is also shown with a dove so it's um but there we are usually the context will help you and the dove as well uh, but it's it's quite only it's the only one i suppose the other one you might say is uh Kentigern. um he's quite often shown with the fish and ring in its mouth which of course is uh, common across uh, the streets of glasgow uh, and um that's another one you can tend to identify quite easily Final question from Irina, um, who understands that you're an artist yourself, and she asks, does your inspiration come from stained glass or saints' histories or both? Do you want to tell us a bit about your artwork? My my pictures um, are not. Um, they are based on uh, medieval uh, decorative arts uh, and, uh, and patterns. Um, so they are usually uh, coloured interpretations of tiles or uh, medieval uh, wood carving uh, and usually abstract uh, rather than uh, uh, images, um, uh, pictorial imagery. Um, about, about 10 years ago, uh, I remember talking to somebody about them and somebody said to me, your pictures remind me of stained glass. And it had never occurred to me um, that um, the imagery that I was making is because of this sometimes quite hard lines between the patterns um, and and I think they were seeing that and the colours perhaps um, so in theory well it, there's no deliberate connection between my research in stained glass and the research that lies behind the images I make um, but all these things go in your head and we can't define the words can we thank you Martin that's brilliant um 
well, thank you on behalf of, of all of us for um, this really fascinating kind of journey of images of, of St. David and, and Welsh saints in St. Glass. Um, thank you so much, Martin. And thank you all for joining us. Um, I will just share my screen to tell you what's coming up. And also for those of you who aren't already a friend of the museum, please do consider uh, supporting the museum by joining our friends organization. Um, and if you are free next week, we also have um, a talk by Chris Parkinson about how to identify the makers of 19th century stained glass windows. Martin showed us many uh, types of, of, of makers today, many, many makers, and Chris is gonna try and tease apart how you can tell one studio uh, from another. Uh, we have also just announced as well two more talks in April. So we're keeping on our engagement online whilst we're uh, closed and um, more information about those talks can be found on our website. So thank you all for uh, joining us. Hope to see some of you next week. Um, have a good evening and special thanks again to our speaker, Martin Crampin. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Josie. Thank you.